Uh, besides the fact that the atmosphere has layers, one of the things you can also talk about is what does the atmosphere contain? What elements does it contain? It helps us to breathe, right? So uh, the atmosphere is about 78% nitrogen, the composition of the atmosphere, 21% oxygen, 1% argon, and other elements. Our atmosphere is unique, maybe perhaps the only atmosphere of its kind in our galaxy. We don't know yet, you know. Uh, most of the other planets, such as Venus, Mars, they have primarily carbon dioxide. We don't have a lot of that. We have a little, you know, but we don't have a lot. So that's good. We've got oxygen, but it's primarily nitrogen. The other thing that our atmosphere does, besides helping us to breathe, our atmosphere helps to absorb the energy of the sun and to stabilize the temperature of the Earth. This is called the greenhouse effect. So it warms us up. Besides warming us up, it spreads the heat of the sun so that uh, it's not too cold and it's not too hot. The carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is increasing this effect and causing an overall global warming. So that's one of the things we got to be careful for is how much carbon dioxide we release in the air so that we do not increase it too much and we have what's known as a runaway greenhouse effect, which is what Venus has. Venus has an increased high, very high temperature. You see here, the sun, the visible sun radiation comes, or all of the electromagnetic rays. Visible radiation absorbed by ground and covered, converted to heat. Ground now radiates infrared radiation. So that's what the Earth radiates, infrared heat. And then infrared radiation absorbed by atmospheric gases, carbon dioxide and water, which re-radiate it. So basically, that layer of um, uh, atmosphere, the ozone layer, the carbon dioxide, the water, that they absorb that heat that is radiated by the surface and they radiate it back to the surface and they radiate some of it back to outer space. And that heat gets trapped a little bit. And that's what the greenhouse effect is. It helps us keep, keep us warm. But if you, have, if, you, if you have too much of this effect, then it traps most of the heat, then it gets too hot. You see? So uh, it's a stable balance that you have to strike. Let's see what this shows. <coughs> this one shows the surface temperature of the Earth uh, over the years. Uh, year 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,600. So we've actually dated back to, back to the Middle Ages, and we know how the temperature of the Earth was varying. Okay? The variation should not be too much, otherwise you have basically an ice age. You have the glaciers that start freezing, and then you have, if it gets too hot, the glaciers that start melting. So this variation should be at most about, you see, 0.2 degrees, you see? A very, very slight variation. It says the recent warming trend correlates with the increase in carbon dioxide concentration since 1800 due to burning fossil fuels and is clearly anomalous compared to changes in the climate over the last millennium. You see carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide. Then the carbon dioxide starts increasing. Over on the right side, you have carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere, parts per million. That's how they measure it. How many parts per million? So a safe one is 280 carbon dioxide molecules per million other molecules. That's what that means, parts per million. 280 is the normal one. 280 molecules per million other molecules, you see. But after that, it starts exponentially increasing. It becomes 300, 320, you see. Uh, uh, that's, this is uh, 1900 right here, 1950, 2000. So right in the middle, around 1900, it looks like it takes off, you see. And then uh, the Industrial Revolution happened around 1870, 1880, right. So right about here, you see, it picks up. And then 1950, it starts to exponentially rise. And then 2000, you see? And then what's happening to the temperature in the meantime? The temperature is also rising, you see? Rising, rising, rising. It's not very noticeable. It's only 0.4. But um, if it keeps doing that, then, of course, it's going to get dangerous if it keeps going up, 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 up like that. That's what you've got to control. Uh, <clears throat> This chart is also a good one to show something interesting. 
As you can tell, I really like graphs and charts because simply by looking at a graph and asking yourself, what does that graph mean? You can learn a lot, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the picture. So a lot of times people look at graphs and kind of just glance at it and they don't really know how to read the graph. To me, that's one of the most important skills you can learn in this class, if anything. How to read graphs, how to interpret them, what does this information tell us, you see what I mean? So I already showed you what this means. You see the temperature decreases, then increases, then decreases, then increases as, as a function of elevation. So you now know what that means. Let's say you're looking at a chart like this. What does this mean? Okay, what they're doing here on this chart is they're comparing Mercury, Venus, Earth, Moon, Mars, the, the, the terrestrial planets and our moon. They're saying, what's the average distance from the sun? Okay, so 0 0.38, 0 0.72, 1, 1, 1 1.5. Reflectivity. Uh, the next column is reflectivity. What does that mean? Well, that's actually the same thing as what we called uh, albedo. How much of the ratio of the sun's energy the planet bounces back, reflects back to the solar system, right? What did we say the albedo of the Earth was on, on uh, Monday? 33, 37, okay? On this chart, they're saying 29, okay? Not all the tables will necessarily agree with each other, okay? So this, guy, this chart says 29, we said 33. That's roughly the same, okay? Don't expect they're all gonna agree, you know? So that's what this is. Mercury, Albedo is lower, 12%. So Mercury tends to absorb more, reflect less, okay? Which makes sense because you can hardly see Mercury at night, right? It's not as bright. How about Venus? Look at that, 75% reflectivity. That's a lot. That's why it's the brightest looking object in the sky at night. There is no other thing that is as bright looking as Venus. The Babylonians called it the morning star, the evening star. That's where women are from, right? Bright, Aphrodite. Um, moon, reflectivity, 12%, 12%, okay? So moon and mercury are similar in that they absorb a lot and they're not, they don't shine very bright. Of course, we see the moon very bright because we're close to it. But if we were far from the moon, you could hardly see the moon, you know. Um, if there, imagine if the reflectivity of the moon had been higher, the full moon would have been a lot, lot brighter, you know. So if this number had been higher. Uh, Mars, 16%. So you see, it's similar to moon. Now the next uh, column is telling you no greenhouse average surface temperature. In other words, if that planet didn't ha have a greenhouse effect, what would the temperature of the surface be if it didn't have a greenhouse effect? Mercury would have been 163 Celsius, okay? If it had no greenhouse. Uh, er, uh, Venus would have been negative 40 Celsius. Uh, Earth would have been negative 16 Celsius. Uh, moon would have been negative two and uh, Mars would have been negative 56. So that wouldn't have been nice, right? Earth would have been negative 16 Celsius average temperature. That, would be, that wouldn't be fun, uh, be much colder. Now, actual average surface temperature, actual average surface temperature. Now look at Mercury, it doesn't really have uh, atmosphere. In other words, Mercury truly has no greenhouse effect, you see? So what happens on Mercury? The daytime on Mercury is 425 Celsius when it's day. In other words, if you live on Mercury and it's, you're facing the sun, it's daytime, you're going to fry 425 Celsius, okay? If you are nighttime, you're on the opposite side, you're going to be negative 175. You're going to freeze. Okay, so because mercury has no atmosphere, it cannot trap that heat and spread it around. The side facing the sun 
is way, way hot. The sun in the dark is way, way cold. You see what the, the, what the atmosphere does? Now, look at Venus. Venus's actual surface temperature, 470. Look at that. That's pretty interesting. If Venus didn't have a, uh, if Venus didn't have a, a greenhouse effect, it would have been negative 40. But because Venus has a greenhouse effect, it's 470 Celsius. It's the hottest planet. You see, it's even hotter than Mercury. 425, negative 175. But this one, 470, negative 40, way, way hotter, not even related to each other. So what that means is this, that um, the greenhouse effect on Venus is so strong that it's much hotter than it would have been if there was no greenhouse effect. This is known as a runaway greenhouse effect. Okay, So one of the things some of the astronomers study is what happened to Venus to cause this? What made it run away, trap the carbon dioxide, trap all the heat, and made it very, very hot? Because if we can know why it happened on Venus, we can try to prevent it happening on Earth. We definitely don't want the Earth to be that hot. Okay, very dangerous. Okay, now well, how about the Earth? What's the actual surface temperature of the Earth? 15 Celsius. Is that good? Yeah, that's the average surface temperature of the Earth, 15 Celsius. So what happened? Negative 16, 15. Did the greenhouse effect on the Earth have a, some effect? Yeah. Without greenhouse, it would have been negative 16. With the greenhouse, 15. What's the difference of the two? 31 Celsius. In other words, the greenhouse effect on the Earth causes a change of 31 Celsius from what it would have been to what it is. That's good. But look at Venus's greenhouse effect. 470 minus, uh, 140, uh, minus negative 40, 510. This is a runaway greenhouse effect. A runaway. You don't want that. This one is a normal greenhouse effect. 31 Celsius difference, you see? Uh, how about moon? Moon, uh, daytime temperature 125, nighttime temperature one. Again, moon is similar to the uh, Mercury. Really hot on the daytime, really cold at night. Really hot, really cold. Same as uh, Mercury. So what do you notice? If you don't have an atmosphere, you're going to be hot or you're going to be really cold. Let's see? And then uh, Mars. Without a greenhouse effect, it would have been negative 56. With a greenhouse effect, negative 50. What's the difference? 6 Celsius. OK, so does Mars have a significant greenhouse effect? No, not much, right? Why? Because Mars's atmosphere is very thin. It barely has no atmosphere, you see? The makeup of the atmosphere of Mars is still carbon dioxide just like the makeup of the atmosphere of Venus. But Mars's atmosphere very, very thin compared to Venus, OK? So you can see here, almost no greenhouse. For Earth, normal greenhouse. For Moon and Mercury, no greenhouse at all. That's why they put the, you see the dashes here? No greenhouse at all, because Moon and Mercury have no atmosphere, OK? So even though that's a um, kind of just numbers, but you see what the numbers mean? You can learn a lot by studying that. 